Okay, in this video, we're gonna solve this problem about Maclaurin series and Taylor polynomials. So we've got a function f that has Maclaurin series converges to f of x for all real numbers, can be expressed as three minus two x plus one fourth x squared plus five x cubed plus dot, dot, dot. Uh, I don't really see a pattern there, but it goes on forever. Uh, a, if g of x is f of x over cosine of pi over four minus two x, right? The equation line tangent to g of x at x equals zero. B, let r of x be the function with r of 0 equals 5, and r prime is f times sine of x. We want to write the fourth degree Taylor polynomial for r of x about x equals 0. And then c is going to be if the function h of x is defined by h of x equals x squared e to the 2 f of x, what is the coefficient of x cubed in the Maclaurin series for h of x? I would say all these are pretty common for free response questions on uh, the BC calc exam. Uh, and that's why I wrote this problem. So let's take a look. All right, first up, uh, so g of x is f of x over cosine pi over four minus two x. We want the equation line tangent. So we're gonna need to know the value of the function and then the value of the first derivative. So, uh, and then we'll write the equation. So we need g of zero, g of zero is just gonna be f of zero divided by, when you plug zero in for x, you just get the cosine of pi over four. So in this video, sometimes for uh, the sine and cosine of pi over four, I'm gonna use one over root two. Other times I'm gonna use root two over two. It just depends on uh, the scenario and how convenient I think it is. I'm also gonna write that down a little bit later. So f of zero, we need to find. So what we really need to know is how this uh, Maclaurin series is working, right? So um, a Maclaurin series basically is this, right? It's the Taylor series where zero is subbed in um, and the center is zero, so you don't get like x minus c to the n, you just get x to the n. So f of zero, f prime of zero times x, f double prime over two factorial x squared, f triple prime over three factorial x cubed, and so on. Um, so what's important about that is that to find f of zero, uh, it's just that first term there, right? So we get three over, Cosine of pi over four, in this case, I'm gonna use one over root two because it's easier to simplify this. So one over root two. So three over one over root two is just three root two. Now we need the derivative, so g prime. This is just quotient rule. Um, I mean, it's not pleasant, but it's still the quotient rule. So it's gonna be the bottom times the derivative of the top, which looks like that, minus the top, which is f of x, the derivative of the bottom. So for the derivative of the bottom, don't forget, uh, the chain rule and there's a couple of negative signs going on, right? So it's gonna be uh, the derivative of cosine is negative sine and then you also pick up a negative two. So we're gonna end up with positive two and then sine uh, pi over four minus two x. And uh, all of that, so this is, there's your chain rule for that one. Um, all of that's gonna be over uh, the denominator or the bottom squared. All right, now we gotta sub in a lot of stuff. Uh, so. We're subbing in zero, which is gonna give us uh, cosine of pi over four, and then f prime of zero. I like to write this step. Some people like to just sub in values right away. I think it's better if you like show this so that you could then go back and figure out where an error occurred if you needed to. It's up to you, it's not essential. You could, you could go right to values at this point. So uh, we need f prime of zero and f of zero. So I mean, cosine of pi over four is root two over two. F prime uh, from the structure of it is just gonna be the coefficient of X, right? So it's negative two. And then minus, we figured out that F of zero was three and then uh, two and then sine of pi over four root two over two. And then all of that divided by, so here I think it's easier to square one over root two, which is why I'm, I'm doing it the way that I'm doing it. Uh, you know, you can use root two over two all the time and be totally fine. If we simplify this, we're gonna end up with negative root two minus three root two all over one half. And then uh, when you simplify that, you get negative four root two divided by one half, which is negative eight root two. All right, and that would mean that our tangent line is y minus three root two equals negative eight root two quantity x minus zero. You don't need the x minus zero, you don't need the minus zero part, um, but I just point slope for everything all the time. Let's take a look at the next one. So let, I would say these get uh, difficult, they increase in difficulty as we go through them. Like kind of a normal AP free response question, but you know. All right, so let r of x be the function with r of zero is five, r prime is f times sine. We wanna write the fourth degree Taylor polynomial for r of x about zero, which is the Maclaurin uh, polynomial. 
but you don't see McLaurin polynomial written very often, which is why I've done it this way. All right, we're looking for a fourth degree, which means we're going to need to integrate a third degree. So we got to find the third degree polynomial for f of x times sine of x. The way that we can do that is just multiply them, right? So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to take the series for sine. Uh, we only need third degree, so we're only going to go to the third degree. So it's x minus x cubed over 3 factorial. So that's an approximation. So we're trying to find f of x times sine of x. And what we're going to do is we're just going to like write down what we know and then literally multiply it. So it's going to look like this, right? The given series um, from the original part. And we're going to multiply by this. We only need to go up to the third degree, though. So we're going to like keep track of that as we go. So we have f of x times sine of x is approximately, we're going to take 3 and multiply it by both things. So you'll get 3x, and then you'll get uh, 3 times x cubed over 3 factorial is 3x cubed over 6, which is x cubed over um, 2, right? So minus x cubed over 2. And then we're done with that 3. So we move on to the negative 2x. So negative 2x times x is negative 2x squared. If we multiply the negative 2x by x cubed, we get x to the fourth, which is higher degree than we need, so we're done with negative two. One fourth x squared, we can multiply by x and get one fourth x cubed. Again, if we multiply that by x cubed, if we multiply the one fourth x squared by x cubed, too high, so we're done with that. And then there's nothing we could multiply the five x cubed by and stay under, uh, equal to or under the third degree, so we're done with that. So this is um, our third degree approximation of f of x times sine of x. So uh, clean that up to get this. Now we just need to figure out what r of x is. So r of x, I'm going to write an accumulation function. So it's where we start, which is going to be r of 0. So r of 0 is 5, plus the integral from 0 to x of uh, r prime of t dt. r prime, we're going to use our approximation, that cubic approximation we just found. So this is going to become this thing, right? So r of x is actually equal to 5 plus the integral. But since we're using a third degree approximation, now we're saying it's approximately this. You kind of have to be careful with your equal to versus approximately equal to signs as you go through these things. But, you know, you get used to it. Don't want to lose silly points. This is um, one of the real advantages of series is now we just reverse the power rule all the way through this. So 5 stays. We're going to get uh, 3 halves t squared minus 2 thirds t cubed minus 1 16th t to the fourth. And then we're going from 0 to x. Sometimes I kind of skip that step and just like write down the answer because uh, the way these always work, you effectively just plug in that upper bound, like integrate plug in the upper bound, because the lower bound is always going to zero you out. So uh, you could also potentially do that. I don't know if that's risky or not. So every t just becomes an x, and then when you plug in 0, you get, you know, 0 minus 0 minus 0, so it's not doing anything. And that's it. All right. I think that's a good problem. I actually think this is, like, two separate problems on an AP exam, where, like, they would just say, like, find the third degree for f of x times sine of x, and then another part of it would probably say, like, you know, the r of x thing. I don't know. Um, let's look at the next one. The next one's kind of brutal. Uh, I don't know. I went like one, one extra. I think like a, an AP question would probably say like the second, uh, the coefficient of X squared, but I went with the coefficient of X cubed and it's going to mean we need a lot of product rule, but we want to find the coefficient of X cubed in the McLaurin series for H of X of H of X is X squared E to the two F of X. So we're going to use the idea that the coefficient of X cubed, um, based on the way a series is written, is just going to be the third derivative at 0 over 3 factorial. Don't forget the over 3 factorial part at the very end. Um, it'd be a shame to do all the work and then, you know, just miss that. So we need a lot of derivatives. Um, H prime, product rule. So it's going to be first, derivative of the second is e to the 2f of x times 2f prime. So this plus second, which is e to the 2f of x times derivative of the first, which is just 2x. So we have this. It is probably better, I th well, I think it's definitely better to factor these as you go. So I'm going to take e to the 2f of x out, and then you're just going to get, well, not just, but you get 2x squared f prime plus 2x. Okay, so now this is a product. So to find the derivative, the second derivative, 
we're gonna need the product rule. And it's like kind of gross. Uh, so h double prime, it's gonna be the first, which is just e to the two f of x, derivative of the second, right? So two x squared f prime of x requires the product rule. So it's first derivative of the second is just f of double prime uh, plus second, which is gonna be f prime derivative of the first is four x. So that's a product rule there. Plus the derivative of two x is just two. Uh, so that's the first half of the original product rule. So it's a little confusing because you use the product rule within the product rule, but don't forget, overall you're doing a product rule, right? So all we've done so far is first derivative of the second, plus we need to do second derivative of the first. So second is this thing, derivative of the first is gonna be e to the two f of x times two f prime of x. So usually, I don't know, I always write it with like the, the constant term I pull out, I guess. So it's like two e to the two f of x times f prime, I don't know. Uh, again, I'm gonna factor e to the two f of x out of this thing. There's actually, I think, more that you could factor out ultimately. Like, I think you take out two. Um, I don't think it's worth it, uh, so instead I'm not gonna do that. So I take out e to the two f of x. So we're gonna have, uh, you kinda, you wanna like combine like terms here if, if possible. Uh, right now I'm just like rewriting everything. Cause this, is, it's, there's so much to keep track of, right? So that's our original thing. Then we still have uh, this other part, except it's two times that blue part, right? So that's where it's becoming instead of two x squared f prime, it's four x squared f prime. And then there's another f prime. So four x squared f prime squared plus the two x times two f prime becomes four x f prime. It's a lot. This you can, um, I get, uh, is this clean up at all? This, this does clean up. I'm gonna just clean it up. So there's a four x f prime and there's another four x f prime. So I'm gonna put those together. So we got our two x squared f double prime. We got eight x f prime. Uh, we have a four x squared f prime squared. And then there's just this like lonely two. All right, that's f double prime. Now we're gonna find f, uh, sorry, that's h double prime. We gotta find h triple prime, which is just a lot of product rule, like a lot. Um, so I don't know, here goes. It's gonna be first, which is e to the two f of x, derivative of the second. So there are three product rules that you need to use to find this. The good thing sort of about this is almost everything still has an x in it and we're looking for h triple prime of zero. And so when we sub in zero, almost everything's gonna go away. So like the third derivative is, is like hideous but its evaluation is pretty easy. So keep that in mind, I guess. All right, we need a product rule on this. So first derivative of the second plus second derivative of the first. So notice there's a two X squared and a four X. So when we plug in zero, all of that goes away. All right, now we need the derivative of this. So that's gonna be first derivative of the second plus second derivative of the first. So the first part there, eight X F double prime has an X in it. So when we plug in zero, that's gonna go away. 8f prime is gonna survive the process. Um, so we're gonna get eight times f prime of zero. All right, that's that part. Now we need to do this. So this is gonna be first, derivative of the second here requires the chain rule, right? It's two f prime times f double prime. And then uh, second, which is that f prime squared times the derivative of the first, which is eight x. But remember, when we plug in zero, that's gonna go away. All of that goes away actually. And then the derivative of two is zero. Okay, so this is, now remember, even though we just used the product rule three times, that was actually the first part of our overall product rule, which is the first derivative of the second. So now we need to do second, which is the whole thing here, times the derivative of the first. So times the derivative of e to the two f of x, which is two e to the f of two x times f prime. Yikes, okay, we gotta sub in zero. So when you sub in zero, just, uh, I'm just gonna like do it. Uh, okay, so a lot of stuff has zeros. So gone, 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 we're gonna get, uh, that's also gone, that's also gone, and then the zero's obviously gone. All that we get here is eight F prime of zero. Plus, okay, uh, gone, 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 and then all we have left is two, and then the two e to the two f prime, no, f of zero times f prime of zero. Whew, okay, we're almost done. 
Uh, now we just need values for f of zero and f prime of zero, which we've dealt with before, right? f of zero is three, and then f prime of zero is negative two. So we're gonna sub these in, and then we're not gonna forget that last crucial part. So h triple prime of zero is uh, two times three is six, eight times negative two, and then you get four e to the six times negative two. So that's negative 16 e to the six minus eight e to the six. So we get negative 24 e to the sixth, but we're looking for the coefficient, right? So if this was multiple choice, that would definitely be an option. And a lot of people would pick it and that's pretty sad. What we actually need to do is remember, divide by three factorial. So the coefficient of x cubed is negative 24 e to the six over three factorial, which is negative four e to the sixth. Okay, so that's a bunch of series stuff. I mean, I think this is any one part of this maybe could be on a free response question. Like this part, I think would stop at x squared. Uh, the previous one, I think actually had like two parts, but these are really good series type questions. So I hope this was helpful and good luck.